Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisia Antoine. This edition's top stories. Schools are being outfitted to combat COVID-19 as the new academic year opens. The Ministry of Education implements regulations for early childhood centers. And the Department of Culture and Creative Industries installs its newest Goodwill Ambassador. Schools island-wide are undergoing rehabilitation works that are not only routine maintenance but retrofitting for COVID-19. The Ministry of Education says despite a reduction in the budget for infrastructural upgrades, all schools are being attended to. Lisa Joseph reports. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic has drastically reduced government revenues, affecting budgets for all departments and agencies. Consequently, the Ministry of Education has not received the whopping $10 million that it did for the 2019-2020 academic year. However, officials say the physical needs of the 73 primary schools and 26 secondary schools on Ireland have not been ignored. Michelle Charles is the Permanent Secretary. And some of these areas include mainly our plumbing and sanitation factors. So a lot of emphasis was placed on ensuring that our plumbing and our washroom facilities are in good condition to allow our students to, to return to school. There has been a greater demand for hand washing stations and you can very well understand why and the focus has been placed on that. At the moment, our school rehabilitation program is about 60% complete with most of our projects being implemented. A few of them may be delayed, some of um, that being due to some circumstances that are outside of the control of the Ministry of Education. However, we can guarantee that most of our works are going to be completed before the reopening of school. The Permanent Secretary says the Ministry will be communicating with the principals of schools that will experience delays in the rehabilitation works with an indication of completion dates. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer says the rehabilitation works that include the installation of additional hand washing stations and sanitizing dispensers form a critical part of the ministry's guidelines for the safe reopening of schools. Dr. Meyer is encouraging parents to help the children with the personal hygiene practices and protocols that will protect them from COVID-19. As part of the guidelines of the reopening of school, there's an entire document that has been prepared based on the WHO in consultation with the chief medical officer that speak to the reopening of school within a safe environment. So issues of personal hygiene, issues of wearing masks, all of those are handled in there. And we encourage our parents to work with us in terms of continuing those practices at home, but similarly, working out you know things like wearing of the mask short periods at home so the children get accustomed to it rather than coming to school on the first day and being confronted with it the ministry of education has in stock face masks face shields and hand sanitizers which will be distributed to schools to assist with the adherence to the covid 19 protocols from the government information service lisa joseph reports in Meantime, several early childhood development centers on island have been approved for reopening in September. Jesse Leos reports on the process and requirements for these institutions in wake of COVID-19. The World Health Organization advises that children aged five years and under should not be required to wear masks. This is based on the safety and overall interest of the child and the capacity to appropriately use a mask with minimal assistance. However, as early childhood centers in St. Lucia prepare to resume operations from September in wake of the pandemic, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar george emphasizes on a particular mandate. What is extremely important at that stage is that any child who develops respiratory signs and symptoms not be taken into a, a service where there are other children there. And this needs to be enforced um, at the maximum. Such children, she says, should be taken to the nearest respiratory clinic for care. This is one of the terms and conditions laid out for early childhood centers looking to reopen. Similar to primary and secondary schools, 
early childhood centers island-wide have submitted their COVID-19 conscious instructional plans to the Department of Education. In collaboration with the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, the department's Early Childhood Education Unit has been reviewing each plan before submitting them to the Environmental Health Department for approval. So they're looking for particular benchmarks by which they're going to then say that center is approved for reopening. And so the environmental health team then liaises with the early childhood center and we have gotten approval for some of the centers. There have been others where particular things need to be done, cleaning of particular surfaces and all of that, you know, markings in place, sanitization of areas, they've gone to give them feedback. So that process is ongoing and even as late of, as Friday, there was a discussion with the head of that team to get the process going in a quite steady manner to make sure that as many centers as possible that meet those benchmarks are then reopened as of next week. That was Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer, Chief Education Officer. She went on to list some of the expectations of early childhood centers going forward. The, the level of um, teacher-student ratio, you know, how many children do you have in a center? We note that we've had centers with 30 little ones to one individual. That is not something that we can continue to have. You know, the social distancing markers, information for parents, the, the basic little posters. And we're not speaking about, you know, going out there and, and printing all kinds of fancy posters, but handwritten posters that speak to, you know, washing of hands, covering of the mouth. All adults must wear a mask while on the compound of any early childhood development center. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. St. Lucia's response to the COVID-19 pandemic in ensuring a safe and strategic approach to the reopening of the economy has resulted in the United States Center for Disease Control, CDC, reviewing its recent travel advisory on St. Lucia. Here's Rog Barrow Lawrence. The Center for Disease Control, the CDC, has reduced St. Lucia's COVID-19 rating to the lowest, level 1, as of only eight countries globally. For the period of July to August 2020 to date, St. Lucia has welcomed 5,897 travellers through the approved ports of entry, of which 4,413 are visitors. Strictly enforced protocols have been put in place to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic, which include pre-testing within seven days of arrival in the destination, mandatory screening on arrival, use of certified taxis and hotels, a 14-day quarantine period for non-bubble countries, the wearing of masks in public, and observing physical distancing. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George noted that these measures have been effective in keeping the spread of the virus at bay. Dr. Belmar George also explained the criteria used by the CDC to determine the status of a country. They use the level of um of the disease burden of COVID-19 within the country. And they also look at the, this is the primary criteria that they use. Um, how much of COVID-19 you have within your country. They also look at your, your healthcare capacity and your public health infrastructure. So when we, and it's one of the, the analysis that we also do within the Ministry of Health. So what they look at is the number of new cases within 28 days. They use two incubation periods for COVID-19. They also look at the trajectory in terms of the increases and the decreases, and they also look at the incidence of COVID-19. So for St. Lucia, for example, usually for you to fall into a level three, you would have to have more than 10 cases within the last 28 days. And for St. Lucia, we had, I think we had about three within the 28 days. And also our, our number of cases was also on the decrease. So, so clearly we fit into a level one. The Chief Medical Officer also praised the endorsement by a Caribbean analytics consultancy firm as it encourages visitors to come to St. Lucia. We were quite pleased to see from an, an international point of view the ratings of, of all of the, the, the islands when they looked at our, 
our incidence of disease per 100,000, and St. Lucia really had the lowest number. So we were quite pleased for that comparison, and it was good that it was coming from an international um, agency as well. The public is reminded to follow all travel and on-island protocols as a continued measure in mitigating the risk of COVID-19 into local communities. Residents too are reminded to be vigilant and report any known infringements to the 311 hotline or the nearest police station. To access St. Lucia's COVID-19 management protocol and for pre-filling of the mandatory travel registration form, please visit www.stlucia.org forward slash COVID-19. From the Government Information Service, Rajvaro Lawrence reporting. The Department of Culture and Creative Industries has welcomed its newest Goodwill Ambassador. Lisa Joseph reports. The Goodwill Ambassadors program serves as a catalyst for the socio-economic transformation and the development of St. Lucia's human capital in all sectors related to the creative arts and the industries that they support, namely sports, visual arts, gastronomy, and music. The role of a Goodwill Ambassador, among other things, is to leverage their profile of celebrity to access opportunities for the growth and development of aspiring St. Lucians in various fields of endeavor. Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bellrose, says this is something Claudia Edward Ladner has been doing for years. The artist created the Edward for Education Charity Foundation, working with schools on the island to create a better teaching and learning environment for the students and teachers. She has to date built a sick bay at the Corinth Secondary School, a learning resource center at the Ave Maria Girls Primary School, brought in a Shakespeare professional to conduct workshops on the island, and has recently completed a theatre arts room for the Cicero Secondary School. We are indeed proud of you. We are even more elated that you have agreed to identify with this program, the Goodwill Ambassadors program, and we are, we are happy that you continue to be a model that our nation can point to, you know, as we continue to build our new St. Lucia. We value your experience and your journey, and we look forward to working with you to assist in us in developing that network of support of authentic St. Lucians or St. Lucian brood success that we can use to inspire our people. We thank you for accepting our invitation to serve, as this is an opportunity for you to continue to give off your best. For Claudia Edward Ladner, the work accomplished under the Edward for Education Foundation has only just begun. She recalls when it all started. One day my nephew came in and he says, Auntie, my classroom is so hot I cannot focus. He said those words and I said, maybe we should find the teach, um, speak to the teachers and tell the parents let's all contribute some fans to the classroom. And then that evening I said I should do something more. And the morning, Sharon Williams called me and she said, Claudia, you should do a charity foundation. I was like, Sharon, we're thinking the same thing. And that's where it all developed. And um, I started, I went to the Ministry of um, Education to talk to them about it. And they said, yeah, go ahead. We will stand behind you 100%. And um, from then on, we just went on with it. The Department of Culture and Creative Industry says Claudia, over the last 20 years, as a singer-songwriter, has represented the island well, opening new markets for local entertainers. She's most popular of the Asian continent, especially where she does annual jazz and blues circuits in Thailand. The artist has been performing on a three to seven month contract in Asia for the past six years, where her popularity has also gained her and her band many invitations to the continent to perform her energetic style of jazz and blues music. Claudia and her band, Naked Chords, have performed numerous times at the St. Lucia Jazz Festivals within the Caribbean, USA, and recently performed on the main stage of the Burton and Agnes Jazz and Blues Festival in the UK. Performance reviews are nothing short of amazing every time. Claudia Edward Ladner, as with the other Goodwill Ambassadors, now has the title of Your Excellency for the term of the ambassadorship. During the investiture ceremony on Friday, 21st August, she was granted the award of the Senusha Medal of Merit Gold. 
She will also be issued with an official or diplomatic passport as awarded by the Cabinet of Ministers. She will serve for a period of three years. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Caribbean Youth Film Festival this year celebrates its 8th anniversary. Having employed as its mechanism a strategic module of teaching the film and television art form to youth, one of the festival's main objectives is the building of uniquely holistic and productive citizens. Festival director Colin Weeks stated that participation has grown from local to regional, with an abundance of interest being shown from the youth of the Eastern Caribbean and beyond. Weeks also explained that the shift of dynamics due to the COVID-19 pandemic allowed for an international pool of professors as well as participants. Because one of the first things that we had to do was to do the usual workshops online. However, this allowed us to have more capacity to bring in people outside of the Caribbean and more professional um, filmmakers into the, the fray. So we got... Um, Persons from Ireland, the like of Carl Schoolfield, who's an Oxford um, professor, who did a, a couple of webinars. Um, we also had um, Leslie Ann Creighton from Trinidad, from Film TT, who is actually the managing director from um, Film TT. We had a, a cohort of, of OECS filmmakers um, from Antigua, Guadeloupe, Dominica. And the discussions over the six weeks that we did those webinars were very informative, very insightful, very educating. And, um, and so we, we knew that we were on the right path in terms of what we were able to produce with this year's festival. It allowed um, persons from all over the world to join us. This year, the Caribbean Film Festival competition is being held under the theme COVID Diaries, giving young people the opportunity to express themselves and portray their experiences through film. We know it is not just an economical um, crisis that we have, but it's a big social crisis. And we see it through, throughout the day, throughout the weeks that have passed, throughout the months that have passed, that how it could affect you psychologically. So it is an avenue where young people could express themselves and, and get that, that emotional stress out, if you want to put it that way. So we're hoping that they would go out and do interviews, um, tell their stories of, of what COVID did to them or, or meant to them. In an effort to support the youth and develop the film industry, Export St. Lucia has also partnered with the Caribbean Film Festival for the film competition. In an effort to support the youth and develop the film industry, Export St. Lucia has also partnered with the Caribbean Film Festival for the film competition. Heidi Constantine Felix is the client manager of marketing and promotions at Export St. Lucia. Um, this festival is all about raising awareness of the film festival and raising the standard of the film festival. And for us at Export St. Lucia, these are big goals of our national export strategy, especially raising awareness of our sectors that export. So as we launch this competition, the COVID Diaries, we just want to encourage St. Lucians to pay attention to what's happening in our, films, in our film sector and the high quality film companies that we have in the works of Dove Productions, Malfini Film and Animation Studio, Ayanola Pictures, we have the Vina Lee, Matthew Emanuel, we have so many companies that have taken our films beyond our shores and let's really support them at this time and support the next generation that's interested in this sector as well. The COVID Diaries film competition was launched on Monday, August 24th at the Export St. Lucia headquarters. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novella Quayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe.
Welcome back. We join Prime Hutchinson for the NTN Novello Creole. Monsieur Ta, Alicia, Monsieur Madame, Department of Kinewa's Responsibility for Information and Government of the CGIS and Television National PIA NTN, Capuzato Novel a Creole, Presato Primus Hutchinson. Après, le ministre de l'Éducation a trouvé une recommandation approuvée par le même cabinet de gouvernement. La décision a été faite pour l'école vive en opération commencée en mois de septembre l'année ici. Nous avons une grande discussion à ce NTN. Le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belmer George, chef officier d'éducation, Dr. Fiona Meyer, et le secrétaire permanent, ministre de l'Éducation, Michel Charles, ont assisté ensemble pour expliquer le développement nouveau de cela et aussi de répondre à la question de la main publique. Les secrets là prennent en considération la situation de la maladie de Corona qui passe stable en pièce de façon. La décision a été faite pour ouvrir l'école le 7 septembre pendant les instituteurs de l'école qui ont présenté à l'école le 31 en mois d'août. Le chef officier médical a expliqué tout ce qui est nécessaire, j'ai fait, pour faciliter les étudiants vivre à l'école sans pérez de affectement. Dr. Sharon Belmont George dit que le ministère de Santé, en collaboration avec le ministère de l'Éducation, a établi un environnement à l'école pour faire assurer que tout étudiant est bien protégé. Dr. Belmont George dit aussi que la recherche a montré qu'il n'est pas facile pour les enfants de trouver affectés facilement comme les adultes. Alors, les enfants ont une bonne protection aussi et fait un appel pour les parents pour, pour tirer un bon support en grand effort. Ça là. Chef officier d'éducation, j'ai fait, ben chef officier de santé, j'ai fait un appel pour les parents suivre un bon exemple devant Ishio pour ça obéir toutes ces règles qui sont en place depuis un caillou même pour encourager ces enfants là pour faire même façon aussi là ils ont à l'école. Le 7 septembre. L'école pays a commencé l'opération le 7 septembre. Ce qui a fait en bas deux options. Yon, c'est pour l'école qui a en pile mamay, par exemple, c'est 4 pour yon sans échec, qui a opéré 4 fois par jour, et yon joue pour l'année nettoyage, nettoyage, et pour ses teachers planer pour l'autre semaine. Et pour l'école qui a 600 en haut de ça, L'école pour yo qui a lancé yon jour par jour, ça veut dire yo qui a assisté l'école lundi, yo qui a resté à kai mercredi, mardi, yo qui a vécu l'école mercredi, etc. Chef officier de l'éducation, Dr. Fiona Meyer, explique en façon sa kai travail. Pour plusieurs parents, ça yo vle savoir c'est qui les jury comment kai vin l'école mercredi, puis comment est-ce qu'il y a manière qui bon. Nous garder de différentes manières pour m'aider à l'école. Là, nous ni petit l'école. Si nous parlons de petit l'école, nous parlons de l'école qui n'est pas en chai maman, mais aussi l'école qui n'est en chai lait. So, par exemple, Stanley John Odlum Secondary School, il y a 7 maman. Actuellement, Marigo, eh? oui, Marigo Secondary. Actuellement, il y a 2 ans de maman. So, nous savons, en dans Manye ça là, nous avons gardé quoi un, un petit l'école parce que c'est ma mère là, mais ce n'est pas un petit l'école parce que nous avons un chai gwande. Mais nous avons gardé toutes ces écoles là, un petit l'école avec nous avons dit, nous avons venu à l'école lundi, mardi, mercredi et jeudi. Vendredi, nous avons pas venu à l'école parce que ça c'est jour, nous avons pris le temps pour nettoyer tout le bagage. Tous les jours, nous avons nettoyé, mais les vendredi, ça, nous avons fait un plus grand garde pour tout le bagage, avec ces teachers qui ont servi tant ça aussi pour plan, pour mettre tout le en place, le bagage de ces mamans. Dr. Maya explique aussi, pour ces l'école, côté l'année en pile étudiant, la situation est différente, comme qui était déjà dit un moment passé. Pour ces étudiants, ça, là, ils ont sauté un jour pour assister l'école. Dr. Maya a ajouté qu'il y a un changement d'options. C'est 
pour ni l'école première et l'école secondaire. Parce que c'est petit l'école là. C'est l'école là qui est plus grand. Nous n'avons l'école qui est 500 mamans, 600. Nous n'avons l'école qui est 900 mamans. Ni en et ça, c'est ni l'école première avec l'école secondaire. Ça n'est ni l'école première avec secondaire. So, en disant c'est l'école, ça là, nous avons gardé en l'autre manière pour Baïs Mamaïla, JDS Mamaïla. So, nous avons gardé, ça nous a créé alternate days. So, ça, means Mamaïla qui est venu, yon jour qui est venu, yon jour qui est venu. Mais tout parent qui savent qui joue Mamaïla qui est à l'école. Nous voulons dire, tout le monde nous pas fait chiffre parce que nous nous regardons les chiffres. Là, nous regardons Mamaï qui est à l'école, Rita et Dimi pour um, dire, après-midi, il y a qui est qui a regardé ce Mamaï là, um, il y a qui est en ville qui a street qui a marché, il y a qui est en transportation qui a des problèmes, school feeding qui a des problèmes, et ça a apporté cette situation juste 5 ans. So, en disant la situation, ça là, chiffre nous pas qu'à faire pièce chiffre en de pièce l'école. Nous ni alternate days, so ça means yon jour maman la kavini, yon jour yon pa kavini. Yon jour yon kavini, yon jour yon pa kavini. Mais ces jours yon pa kavini l'école, la ni toi vay ki kay prepare by si maman sa la, pou essaye pou kite yo toujou ka fe toi vay yo, même si yon pa l'école. So pa wan sav, pièce tan pa chanje, sans ce moment-là, quand il l'école, il va si c'était Rita qui a vint l'école, c'est même bagaille. Nous ne pas changer ça. Ou ça, vous avez des ennemis, ou ça, vous avez l'école, et pour ça, garder pour l'autre joie, pas l'école, ou ça, aussi savent. Ce grand chef-là, quand il fait, fait les parents, savent que tout arrangement est en place pour, pour aussi un cas de l'étudiant tombé malade, comme la majorité de l'école pays a pris le wellness center. En cette leçon, pour le présent, en total de 5 138 tests j'ai trouvé conduit pour maladie corona et en yo 26 j'ai trouvé confirmé des maladies ça là. En ces 26 là, 25 j'ai trouvé guérison. Dernier cas qui a enregistré mardi le 18 2020, c'est un cette leçon qui était retourné, qui était à recevoir assistance à l'hôpital Victoria en condition qui était stable. Nos qui employé et puis établissement gouvernement pour quarantine découvert une madame, cette lycée, 48 ans de l'âge, qui était perdue la connaissance pendant qu'elle était en quarantine. Ça a vendredi le 23 en mois d'août. Elle a vite été portée à l'hôpital à bord ambulance et présentement, il y a un ICU à l'hôpital Owen King qui a reçu une assistance médicale. Le gain médical a présentement qui a conduit une investigation pour déterminer les conditions. Et pour ça, ménager Mme Sala, le département de santé a présenté, a présenté plus d'informations et façon de réponse des maladies de corona concernées Ka Sala. Et c'est comme ça, M. et Mme, nous avons trouvé votre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation pour que je puisse considérer que c'est la vie. Nous avons présenté une autre nouvelle à Kouéor. Après ça, je vous remercie pour ce tour. En ici. Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anisia Antoine.